which is transparency. Sure. So, uh, students, uh, we're going to show you right now, we're going to share our screen and show you uh, how we are transparent um, with, with, uh, with actually contacting schools and teachers, going into these schools and saying, hey, you know, our teachers really uh, are interested in, in studying and teaching abroad, but they need to see your school. They need to hear interviews or talks with your supervisors and your principals. They need to see and hear talks from current foreign teachers at the schools right now. So right now we're going to show you, um, we are going to show you our, our website and just, just an idea, you can get an idea of uh, a school profile and a teacher profile. Yeah. So we're, we're going to show you that our, right now. This is our home page, but we're going to show you a, a teacher's profile at the moment. Already. And uh, here are two of the uh, four schools we work with in Korea. So honestly, if you click, uh, schools can click on the teacher profile and read about the teacher, look at the photos, uh, see videos uh, about the teachers, and read about content. Um, also, you can click uh, on a school, as I'm going to do right now, and you can see information about the school. You can read about it. Other, other companies take an approach where they don't even give you the name of the school. So we feel this is very, very essential uh, to helping uh, teachers find out more information and kind of discover these schools. Um, and this is what we do. We go in, we interview these schools, and um, we'll, we'll, we're going to show you a brief uh, introductory video uh, at another school called the, the Herald School. And this is one school yeah, that we this, love working with. This lady is really nice, and we, we like working this, with this school. We, we visit all the schools directly. We're very, uh, we're very much direct contacts with them. And that's the way we want to keep it, direct contacts with teachers, direct contacts with schools, to make everybody very comfortable with each other. So really quickly, we'll just show you guys a couple pictures of the school. Um, you'd be very surprised. Uh, you're, we're dealing with mostly wealthier uh, students because their parents have the money to send them to English schools. Uh, so, you know, these schools are really, really uh, beautiful, and um, it's really welcoming, and, and uh, it's, it's a comfortable place to work, this school in particular, and the schools that we work with. So this is Christy. Uh, she is the head supervisor, and here's a, a, an interview we took with Christy. So you guys... So we will continue on to our... Uh, we will continue on to our second mission, guys, which is about uh, better teachers. So... We're, we're looking for, uh, in Asia, uh, Korea and China especially, uh, James, James and I, and we've done a lot of research uh, with uh, friends uh, abroad as well, uh, and we, we've come to like this decision and this kind of uh, discovery that there's it's about 50-50 of applicants that are really interested in teaching abroad. They're, they're, they come abroad, they're great teachers, they work really well, they have great experiences, they stay active, and then another 50% uh, percent or so, they're a little bit careless. So James and I are kind, uh, kind of starting this, uh, almost like this, uh, this, this change uh, in teacher quality um, and really screening for great teachers such as yourself. Uh, those of you who've, who've studied education and have student taught and and worked really hard and won a good job after you, you graduate. Um, so the schools we work with, we explain to them, these are the candidates that we're looking for. Um, but if you're not certified teacher, you can also be a, a four-year degree holder and, and you, can, you can be, uh, you, we're looking for people with wonderful personalities as well because uh, there are schools that want people uh, like that too. But uh, you guys that are, are studying to be teachers are, are basically our main uh, targets and focuses for these yeah, schools. Yeah, going abroad, going abroad to these um, to these schools. I just want to move this table forward, so we're gonna have to move forward. Yeah. Um, going abroad, uh, you might be thinking that uh, it's it it has to be a very competitive environment for certified, uh, almost master's degree holding teachers. And it's not always the case. You know, a, a lot of these schools, the, the bottom line comes down to personality. 
and you know, can you show a love for students? Do you want to be teaching? And uh, will you be a team player with you know all of their all of their other staff? And that's really what they're looking for. It's it, it and it really comes out in your videos. And that's why we're doing this. You know, it's it's kind of all about the video profiles because that's what schools want to see. You know, imagine imagine that you're a school director thinking about hiring somebody from 12,000 miles away. Uh, um, an email it will not suffice. Uh, a, a, a phone, phone call, call will not suffice. It's not good. You know, and we say the same thing for schools too. We're saying that people like you who are interested in teaching abroad also want to know a lot more about a school from 12,000 miles away before you can make a decision. And that's what we're kind of facilitating, just in, you know, a, a flow of information between you. Because these opportunities really are great. You can make a lot of money, pay back a lot of student loans, you have a great time, meet a lot of great people, learn some very interesting things. And we know that these schools, if they were properly displayed to qualified candidates like you, that they would get lots of great interest from great applicants. And we know that you, if you saw these schools um, in all of their glory, and these schools, they're really nice. They're, they're really great schools. Honestly, any of you would, I, I think, be very happy to work at these schools because yeah. we've been to them. We know everybody that works there. We've spoken with the directors. We've worked at the schools personally, not all of them. Um, but we, we know they're great places. And sure. We just think that you all would uh, would benefit by taking a look at them as well. And and just to to uh, support uh, that comment that James just met uh, did just uh, spoke about uh, in regards to being uh, good environments, the 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 students really really work hard, and that's that's one of the best parts about the job. Um, you know, of course, we have the stereotype about schools and students uh, in Asia and how hard they study. Um, in the large majority of them uh, really do work hard and it is uh, quite true and it, it makes your job that much better that's another great reason uh, to go honestly I really looked forward to going to work every day I was a secondary teacher but I taught seven-year-olds my first year and at first I was a little reluctant but after a couple weeks I was like this is a great job these kids come in they're adorable they're hilarious and they love they will work hard for you. You know, if you care about them, as you know when you're studying education and as I learned, if you set good standards and, and you, you discipline them well and you take care of them, they're going to they're gonna look after you and take care of you. And, and honestly, so. discipline might be a little bit easier over in Korea and China. Sure is. <laughs> yeah. As yeah. you, uh, I'm sure, are experiencing, well, you will experience, especially uh, yeah. in the spring when, you're, when you have your own classes, uh, when you're student teaching. Um, Let's so, just check in with her real quick, make yeah. sure everything's good. Uh, is, can you hear everything? Is everything okay? Maria? Uh, yeah, I, we, we have to change the mic every once in a while so that we can hear you better. Okay. Uh, okay. So now we can hear you, yes. Okay, well, we we'll have everything that you've been saying. Good, good. You, wa you want to talk a little bit about, um, that somebody brought up the last time, safety and um, how much Sure. Sure. Um, um, really, uh, really, uh, what, 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 what is we're just, we're just gonna finish off, off. guys. We're just gonna finish off with two programs. With programs. We, we are, are implementing with, 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 with our uh, company that you. I think we think you're really gonna want want to hear. And after that, we're gonna do Q and A. Um, so Maria, I guess the students can ask you the question, and then you can relay the question to us after after we talk a little yeah, bit more. Just a little uh, just a few more minutes, okay? So quickly, we're going to talk about two programs. The first is uh, our goals program. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, Matt and I, we know a lot of teachers abroad. We, we met on a baseball team. That's how we met out, out in Korea. Um, we were a very bad baseball team, unfortunately. Uh, but that's how we met. And Partly we, because of James. And anyway. a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of the teachers on our team and in the league are teachers. Uh, a lot of the, the players in the team uh, and in the league are teachers. And we, we saw that there were some teachers that, you know, they had a great experience. They're happy. And if you're happy, you're going to be a good teacher. And if you're happy, you're going to want to keep having great experiences. If you're not happy, everything's bad. And we know that some teachers go abroad and they don't have a good time. And it's just not for them. So, sometimes it literally, legitimately is not for some people going abroad. Maybe some people are very, you know, kind of homebodies. They really like to be... Um, they really like to be comfortable and they you know comfort is good I like to be comfortable but also getting outside of your comfort zone is important 
However, we have discovered, or we have kind of found out, that the teachers that have the best times when they're abroad are the teachers that are constantly achieving something. Yeah. Uh, and by something, I mean goals uh, outside of the classroom, personal goals. Mm -hmm. And for me, my personal goal as soon as I got here was I want to start learning language. I want to I want to learn Taekwondo. I want to join a sports team. Those are the three things that I said I want to do them. You know, it's just part of my life. I like to feel that sense of accomplishment from learning something. And, and I'm sure Matt has done. Something and mine similar. was also joining a team or an organization, um, and and learning how to co uh, cook some Korean food, which was right. which was wonderful. I also yeah. You, I, le you learned how to uh, make kimchi, right? I, I know Korea is not the place to learn how to salsa dance, but that's yeah. where I took a salsa class. Uh, I had to learn how to make kimchi. I mean, it's you know things outside that you are that you have set a goal for yourself to achieve that you do achieve. They really do give you that sense of ful fulfillment. You know, I don't need to convince you of that, but it is, although it's obvious, you know, a lot of people don't do it, and they end up getting into this rut, this personal rut that they don't feel like they're 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 doing anything worthwhile because they're not active, guys. Like they they go to teach, um, they surround themselves with uh, negative people sometimes, and they're always judging the culture. Yeah. Then they go home, and then they they wake up and come back to school the next day. Yeah. Um. In in Seoul, it's such a lively city, and the cost of living is so affordable. And we'll talk about that later. There's always something to do, or something to uh, to be uh, engaged in, or or people to meet and things to see yeah. um, while you're abroad. And and people uh, people take full advantage of that, and some people they don't. And the ones that take advantage and stay active have wonderful experiences while they're abroad. The the people that don't care and they're like whatever I'm 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 not doing much, you know they're not active and they have very negative experiences. So mm -hmm. it's it's quite it's very logical. It's very logical. And so what we're going to do mm -hmm. essentially is before you depart, before your arrival in country, we're going to be setting up goals with you. Um, and throughout the year, we're going to be calling you a number of times to actually encourage you in these goals, discuss what you know any obstacles you have, help you with getting in touch with the right people. And really kind of, you know, if you want, you don't have to do this program, but, you know, it's, we encourage it for everybody, you know, kind of mother hen you into achieving uh, the goals that you set for yourself and thinking about new goals as you go abroad or as you go along. Um, some people are over there studying uh, for the LSATs, you know, tests afterwards. Some people are there to make a lot of money. And um, save it and, and pay, back money, pay back student loans. Everyone, everyone, almost everyone that's a graduate of college is paying back student loans while they're abroad. Um, and it's very feasible. It's very feasible yeah. because it's a free flight. They fly you out, um, and we'll talk more about this with questions. The, the the schools we work with, they fly you anywhere from America uh, or the Western world for free, okay? And when you finish your contract, they fly you back home for free, no cost. Uh, living, when once you get there, you get your own apartment. Some are small, some are, some are kind of uh, medium sized because in the city uh, spaces. Uh, you know, it's it's hard it's hard to to get a large apartment if, if you know if you're going to pay a lot of money for it. But the 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 apartments that they provide for you are a little smaller, but they're they're comfortable. So, so the goal, <laughs> sorry, getting we're, back, we're, we're bird walking a little bit. You're going to ask some questions about this, but the goals program, personal goals program, very important to having a good time. Yes, um, and we will uh, specifically call you five times, four to five times throughout the year. To uh, kind of look after you and make sure you're uh, you're staying on track and you're staying happy. And our okay. second program is a teacher development program. Yes. So in short, uh, because I know we want to get to Q and A, our teacher development program is specifically for you guys. So what we're doing is making your experience abroad as valuable as possible. And the way we're going to do that together is we set up uh, what's called uh, a Weebly, pro if you read about this information for teachers on our website, we have what's called the Teacher uh, Development Program. So you can create your own online portfolio, okay? So when you're abroad, if you want to teach lessons, by the way, you'll use American textbooks, so you can teach lessons that correlate with Pennsylvania state standards. You all know the state standards website. I believe it's pdes.org. Um, but you'll learn about it when you're student teaching because you have to teach according to those standards and create lesson plans. So when you're abroad, if one week you want to create a lesson plan that correlates to, to the, sta the standards and put it on your Weebly portfolio, uh, you can do one, one uh, lesson a day. You can do one lesson a month. 
So the goal, the goal of this program, when you come back after a very quick year of being abroad, believe me, it flies. When you come back and you sit down in an interview uh, for a, a teaching position when you're back home, and you're, the principal or the vice principal says, "So how is your experience? That that's amazing. You're 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 teaching abroad. That that's great. That's wonderful." Um, how was it? You say, well, it, it, was, it was a wonderful experience. I really uh, tried to make it as valuable as possible, and this is a pro portfolio I created to, uh, to make it uh, valuable and kind of boost my resume up a little bit. Um, yeah, James, and, is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, and what, you know, the reason that we're doing this is because a lot, of, uh, a lot of teachers that are thinking about going abroad might not end up doing it because they're scared of this year being an empty year on their resume. They come back and they say, oh, well, you know, or the, the school that they want to come back and teach at says, well, I see that you taught abroad, but we don't value teaching abroad as, as much as we value teaching somewhere else, even if it's a different state with different standards in the U.S., uh, because we want to see that you've taught certain standards. But if you actually do this professional development program with us and do, do this online portfolio, you can actually show that you have, indeed, uh, been practicing and utilizing the standards that this school uses. Yeah. And so, you know, we're trying to make this as valuable for you, not only personally, but also professionally, um, during this year abroad. Okay. So, uh, that's uh, us yeah. finished with our babbling. And yeah, so, uh, sorry if we're talking a lot. Um, I, I hope you guys understood uh, most of what we were trying to say. Um, Maria, I would like to direct us to uh, 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 It's going to be, uh, let me tell you, it's going to be a little bit different difficult because what we what I've had to do is mute you to make it understandable. Uh, yeah. 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 I understand. Okay. <laughs> and and then I so I don't know if I could switch back and on back and forth. Can I you're gonna do that for me. I'm gonna have a student assist me. Um so um we're on right now so do you we're gonna start with questions. Anybody have a question? Any questions? Any question. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Okay. Say it louder. Is it only for a year? Yes. yes. Uh, uh, a 12-month contract that you sign up for after going through a successful interview slash interviews um, and after the schools look at your profile, they learn a lot about you. They want to hire you. They can offer you a They will, if, if they like you, offer you a position. Um, and then they, they give you a contract, okay? So they draw a contract. Uh, uh, pr and they propose it to you. And what we like to do is is assist you with your uh, contract and uh, kind of look it over. Well, if if you have any questions about it, uh, we will discuss. Um, you know, we will we will ensure that it's everything's okay. Um, if you have any questions, but yes, these contracts last for one year. Usually in in Korea, uh, they start in March or in August. Um, uh, th that's when the school year starts. So for, it's, it's literally from March 1st to, to, to March 1st. It's literally one whole year. Really quick, some contracts start in March, other contracts start in summer, beginning of summer or end of summer. Sometimes there are three months contracts available just for the summertime, but not other parts of the year. And also in Korea, uh, the sc schools hire every month because there are uh, situations where uh, teachers arrive, sometimes they get sick, Sometimes there's a family emergency, et cetera, and a teacher needs to go, and then another teacher needs to be hired right away. So uh, when you guys graduate in May, there could be a position available in, in June, uh, you know, July. Uh, another big hiring cycle is in August. So, yes, 12-month contracts uh, mostly for a year. Next question. Somebody has to have I always uh, enjoy answering this question, as you know, Maria, um, because a lot of people are scared of the unknown. They don't know a lot about South Korea. They know America and South Korea have a good uh, relationship. You know, there used to be a war there. Uh, yes, there was, there, there was a war. Technically, North and South are still at war. Yeah, they never signed a, uh, an, what, an armistice. armistice. Yeah. yeah. That's what um, so to, uh, to answer your questions about safety, uh, guys, you're going to love living in the city of Seoul especially, uh, as well as 
other, uh, I'm, I'm going to speak specifically with Seoul because the majority of our schools are in Seoul, yeah. so the capital of South Korea. You're talking about a bustling city that's kind of like Manhattan in some parts because it's built and westernized beautifully in many parts of the city. Beautiful, really. There are so many things that you can get that, uh, that remind you of home, that are comfortable. There, the public transportation is absolutely immaculate. It's the second best subway system in the world behind Hong Kong. So clean, so safe. Um, and, and specific regards to safety, uh, guns are illegal. Drugs are illegal. Um, so you can imagine how much crime is reduced. Um, it, it's, also, it's also kind of a cultural reason for safety. It's a much... Uh, Korea specifically, um, one of the least confrontational... You know, Koreans are one of the least confrontational... Actually, the least confrontational people in the world. And I say that because I saw it in a study, but honestly, it's very true. It's yeah, just... It there, really there, are no, there are no... I mean, there will be, but you know, there, there's not really fighting... There's, you know, there's, there's not much in the way that will lead to, um, you know, violent crimes. Uh, there's not lots of pickpocketing. It's just not in the culture, really. It's, it's a much more kind of respectful culture. Yes. And in regards, like James said, like petty crimes, like pickpocketing, um, it, it, is, it just doesn't. Honestly, yeah. people uh, uh, at restaurants and at, uh, you know, in some night spots when people are out for the evening, you know, they leave bags, uh, purses, you know, when they go to the bathroom yeah. without any worries, you yeah. know, because no one's going to steal it. Um, it's very disrespectful. It's very culturally disrespectful, especially in East Asia, yeah. um, specifically. I'm talking Korea, Japan, and China, to uh, kind of lower yourself to that level. And I'm going to talk about fighting, physical violence. Uh, spe specifically with physical violence, uh, it's 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 very much so looked down down upon. If there is an altercation where people are yelling at each other, the first person to attack another, they don't get sent to jail. They have to pay thousands of dollars to that other person for injuring them. And it's it's true. It's like true. The, the legal system, everything, the the you know the the interaction culture between people, it's it's all about respect. It's all about um, you know who is kind of above the other one in terms of age hierarchy, uh, title hierarchy, other, you know, familial hierarchies, and it, it creates an atmosphere of safety. It really is. Um, I so, yeah, I mean, we can go on and on about safety and, 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 the, and the, the beauty of, of that in, in East Asian if culture. If we talk to Matt... Yeah, Matt and James, I think we're running out of time. Okay. So I think we just have mainly enough time for you to tell them how to get to your website and, and that kind of thing. Right on the website. I think that'd be better. Okay. Yeah. Actually, if you go to truthteacherservices.com, click apply now. That's that's honestly it. As soon as you do that, we will get an email with all your information, and we're going to give you a call. Okay. Yeah. So, guys, literally, you, you, you click. Okay, on so the I could just give them that email, and then they'll know how to um, get touched. Yeah. If you go, if to, you the go to the. Home. So here's the page, guys. I'm logged in. You just go right to truthteacherservices.com, apply now. And you apply. That's it. And this is the only information you have to fill out and submit. As soon as you do that, we have your information, and then we contact each of you directly. And there is a field on here called friends you hope to be hired with. If you do want to work with a friend overseas and you talk with somebody saying, hey, let's do this, that's honestly, actually, uh, it's something that schools really like to see. So think about it. So... Yeah, guys, I highly encourage that. Um, you know, you, you, you're working together as, and I kind of wish I, I, I developed good relationships with people I was uh, in student teaching orientation with. Um, I'm okay now, obviously, because I finished my experience, but talk to each other. Honestly, have discussions with one another and, and find people that are interested in an in, 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 in opportunity like this. And, and, and you can you can apply together, and we can do it at a school, part of the city. Uh, that's uh, that's what we look forward to. All right, and Matt, one last question that somebody has. They kind of want to know the salary range. Good question. Uh, depending on what school you're at, uh, you can be earning between two to three thousand dollars per month. Uh, your housing is completely paid for. Your air airfare is completely paid for. You don't pay any taxes on it. 
You get a bonus month's salary at the end of the year for free if you complete your 12-month contract. Pension. Uh, little bake, baker's dozen right there at the end. You also get a pension payment from the school at the end for free. It's, it's a part of the government regulations. Yeah. Uh, the school basically pays you an additional half month salary at the end of your contract. So you're getting basically a month and a half of pay bonus at the end. And yeah, so it's about two to $3,000 per month, depending on the school. You're probably going to be on the lower end of that yeah. you know, at the beginning. But some of the schools that we work with actually do pay nice salaries up in the, you know, up to $3,000. And very quickly, guys, the two weeks of free paid vacation, uh, national holidays in the winter and then uh, in the fall that are kind of like mini vacations. So there's like 15 to 20 national holidays that are also paid vacations. Oh, yeah, the, the vacations are the best part of yeah. the, you know, teaching abroad, obviously. You, very nice vacations. And, and some of you might be thinking, oh, well, we don't have three months off. Well, you don't have three months off. That's how the school you operates. Don't, you don't need it. And you really don't. If you get a job in business, guess what? You get two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks of paid vacation. Southeast, so. Southeast Asia awaits for everybody. Cambodia, everybody go there, really. Yeah, and that's another wonderful, wonderful thing about teaching abroad. You know, I, of course, traveling. You know, we've had wonderful... I've been to nine countries in less than two years, and it's just... I can't... Words can't describe how amazing uh, that's been. I, I can't... I could go on and on, but... Or, we won't. or I could be speechless. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I think that's going to have to wrap it up. But thank you so much for um, coming, everybody. <laughs> okay, and I'll I'll direct them to you um, if they're interested. Yeah, just go to the page. I'll get you. I'll say okay. bye. You really look cool. Really cool. Thank you so much. 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 Bye. Bye.